Monday Night Chat with Wong Chen. Brought to you by the Member of Parliament for Kelana Jaya in collaboration with Invo. Okay, welcome back to Monday Night Chat. We've been away for about three weeks. Well, last Monday we couldn't do it because it was a public holiday. So uh, we're going to start off this Monday Night Chat with a simple hello from our five new interns. I don't know, what, what do I say now? <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> Let me think. Hey, Ivan here. Future lawyer with obsession with Mandarin collars and big eye bags. Wait, is it correct in English? Yeah. Hey guys, I'm back. My name is Megan and I'm back. Look at my magical bok choy. Oh my gosh, sorry. Hi, I'm Paul May. Um, I'm from HELP and I'm studying accounting and finance. And did you know that the number of heart attack victims is increased by 20% on Mondays? Wait, stop counting. Okay. Hi guys, I'm Leanne. Um, I'm a third year social science student from Monash. Um, and I, uh, I like banana leaf and uh, pineapples. Because I have a pineapple tattoo here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nadira and I'm studying international economics. And um, I'm sorry, Anne, but I think chicken rice is a lot better than banana leaf. Okay, Q&A this week. We have three questions as usual. So the first question is, what happened to my bulan ke pajikan? That's a cheeky question from one of my readers. <laughs> uh, it's a bit politically sensitive, so I don't, don't want to really uh, dwell on the matter. But essentially, Bulan Kebajikan is when we run for the entire month where we interview very poor people from the Desamantari area. And uh, last year, we did about 750 applications and we uh, gave money to about 400 families, a very, very poor, hardcore, poor uh, families. So we were doing reasonably well in the first uh, six days of our Bulan Kebajikan, having uh, interviewed about 300 plus people. Unfortunately, we have to stop the program this year. We're trying to resolve the matter with the Selangor State Government, hopefully that we can reinstate the matter as soon as possible. Uh, we do it in June because that's, that's when we get our summer interns come in. And at the moment, we have five interns, so they help out. Uh, what is important for us is that the interns get to interview poor people and be able to relate to their, their, their personal experience so that when they look at public policy making with us, they actually have a face uh, or they can actually identify what really the issues are in poverty in Malaysia. Okay, so stay tuned for that. I don't think I want to publicize the matter too much, but uh, just to uh, let you all know that, you know, we have no choice but to shut down Bulan Kebajikan this time. Okay, we move on to a controversial subject of tourism tanks regarding Sarawak and the quarrel that the Sarawak government has with uh, Nazri. I know Nazri quite well. He's the, he's the tourism minister. He's quite a nice, friendly guy in parliament. Uh, but this matter clearly shows that Nazri did not talk to the Sarawak people. Yeah? I remember the debate for this tourism tax was done at about 3 a.m. in the morning on the last day just before Hadi Awang's bill. It was ridiculously late. Uh, there was nobody there. There was like maybe 15 members of parliament left. Uh, but it's clear that Nazri did not do his homework to win the uh, stakeholder support from the Sarawak side. The other thing about this uh, development is I think it is a political uh, statement or political position uh, that Sarawak is telling the federal government that they are going to exercise greater autonomy in times to come and that the, if without consulting Sarawak properly, they were willing to say no to the federal government. Okay. Last issue, the big story of the, of the last uh, week or so on the Felda matter, the FGV fight between Zakaria and Isa Samad. To me, it's very simple. If Isa Samad says Zakaria has done something wrong, uh, the MACC must investigate Zakaria. Yeah? Zakaria is tweeting non-stop and uh, saying that Isa Samad may or may not have done certain things, but he's just very unhappy with Isa Samad. Then the MACC must investigate Isa Samad as well. The bottom line is uh, Isa Samad being a politician and member of parliament and former Menteri Besar uh, must be investigated fully 
not Zakaria. <laughs> okay, if it's, it both needs to be investigated, but I think Isa Samad needs further attention, special attention because of his nature as a politician. And everybody knows in Malaysia, politicians are the cause of corruption. Yeah. So Isa Samad, I hope MACC will really focus on him and do the same for Zakaria. And hopefully by then, we will then get a clearer picture what really happened to FGV, how did they lose 11 billion in valuation in the spate of 3-4 years. So that is the end for Q&A this week. Thank you. Okay, for Policy Monday this week, we're going to talk about the environment, a subject that I don't really talk about usually. Yeah. So when we look at the environmental issue, we have to start with the recent news on the Paris Agreement with the American pulling out. Now, first thing is we've got to congratulate our Environment Minister Wan Junaidi for expressing deep regret and deep concern about the pullout by Donald Trump. Yeah, that is the right message that we need to send. Now, even having said that, the Paris Agreement, even though signed by 195 countries, is just it's actually non-binding, it's not mandatory, it's actually voluntary. So even having said that we agree on voluntary basis, we may still not meet the targets, right? So when we look at the environmental issue, the biggest concern globally is really about the issue of climate change. Now, how do we deal with the environment as a country not fully developed and still developing like Malaysia? For Malaysia, there are two basic uh, areas where we have, we have a lot of environmental issues. And this is with the NGOs and, you know, and to do with international trade. And that is to do with palm oil and also timber. Right? When we look at palm oil, palm oil is the second most important industry in Malaysia. It provides half a million jobs. Uh, under Felda, it has alleviated uh, you know, rural poverty. It, it's Felda alone with 112,000 settlers uh, has an impact, direct impact on a million of our people. It's very important. So for Malaysia on sustainability, we're pushing for Malaysian Sustainable Palm Oil, MSPO, to be a new international standard on sustainability. So the government is pushing forward that. I think the opposition is helping and urging the government to pick up pace and to make sure that the standards meet international standards. Now, the issue is similar to the issue of timber. Timber is run by selective logging. Sustainable, sustainable forestry requires a lot of uh, concession land so that we can go through a cycle system to log and then replace the log so and so forth over a period of 30 to 60 years. That hasn't happened. Uh, if there's only, the only remaining industry left is really in Sarawak, where the timber industry, it is less destructive by far compared to palm oil. But the issues are still the same. Both palm oil and, and timber have problems in the sense that the spread or the, of the economic benefits from these two environmentally destructive policies are not good enough. The social justice inequality issue uh, in Sarawak in particular, in the timber industry, six families control the entire industry and the wealth is not spread to the people. So if we pursue environmentally unsound policies, the least we can do is make sure that the microeconomic sharing of the pie is done. So we have to go back to the uh, drawing board in terms of policy making to ensure that while we defend both industries as essential to our economy, that the economic spread is done properly. Okay. Now the last issue on the environment, and this is a global pro problem, it's not really a specific to Malaysia, is the issue of consumption. The West consumes three to five times more than the developing countries. The developing countries, whether they're Indians or Chinese or Africans, are catching up and they're consuming more and more. What we need to do is to make sure that while they catch up and they have an economic right to consume a bit more, that the West must also reduce their consumption level. And only by doing that can we really stop the issue on climate change. Okay, that's it for Policy Monday this week.